Hey, what's up guys? It's Foster from English Nui Kru. Just a really fast note before we get started today. This is part two of a two-part series with Anthony from Gringo Lingo. So if you have not listened to part one, I recommend that you start with part one. That's it. Let's get to the show. Ciao, ciao. Oi, fala aí pessoal, bom dia. Você está escutando o inglês do inglês do rádio. I am your host, Foster Hodge. This is your daily dose of English. What do you say to, I get this question all the time, where it's like, you're good with languages. You speak four languages. You play music. Like, you have the language gene. I'm not good with languages. Like 95% of my students say, I'm just not good with languages. Studying mm -hmm. English for 15 years at, at Wizard, you can cultura inglesa, studying in school, and I just don't get it. Um, mm -hmm. I imagine people make that argument to you because you are multilingual and you play music those are two things that people stigmatize you for <laughs> yeah yeah um uh, i i give them a bunch of reasons um i know <laughs> we don't get to say all of them because what uh, i know we won't go into this subject yet but brazilians are very their conversation difference so i normally get interrupted by them yeah but, which is not a problem but <laughs> one of the things i tell them is that i'm just bored and my habits my hobbies are different than theirs So I love going on Wikipedia, looking up chicken, for example, and then just switching the languages and seeing which words are similar. Yeah. Who the hell does that in their free time? People have friends, they go out, they leave their house. I don't, I, I look at chicken on Wikipedia. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why, that's why I'm good with languages because sure, I don't even know like what, what football teams there are in New York, but I can tell you how to conjugate verbs in the Russian past and perfect. Like that's, that's what I do. And not yeah. everyone's going to like that. So what people have to do is figure out something else that they like, and then use English as a tool. Don't make it. So you're studying English, make it so that you're talking about photography, preparing for your Lyft or Uber passengers. The same way I hate math. I'm awful at math. I almost didn't graduate high school because of math. Yeah. I literally can't, can't do simple, simple math at all. Yeah. But if I need to worry about a trip, because I'm not going to worry about my, my car bill now, I'm going to worry about my tickets to South Africa, like, then I'm going to use that to think about math. So try and, if English isn't what you're interested in, use English as a bridge to something else. Precisely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I totally get the idea that, you know, we, we are weird. People that like languages are like the very, very slim minority. Yeah. But most people, communication is just a tool. Language is just a tool to like connect with other people. So right. if you like basketball, like start watching the NBA and learn about them, learn how to speak about it. If you like photography, start taking pictures, find an American that likes it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. People like to think that it's, I don't know if it's a cultural thing, honestly, because I've spent like the last three years with Brazilians. So I don't, I don't really know too much about Americans anymore at this point. Yeah. But, uh, they, I'm here right now. Seems... I'm very, very confused. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, it's weird because you have this reverse culture shock and like you see people doing things in the States and you're like, but I did that. It's, like, it's weird. <laughs> reverse culture shock is way worse, way worse. Yeah. Um, but what, What I noticed here is that people like to find something to blame. And I think that's a human thing too, but I've noticed it a lot more here. And so they either like to blame English or themselves. And a lot of times, unfortunately, the teachers. And although I don't really always agree with every teacher's method, I feel like it's, it's a combination of those things. So you can't really blame one thing. Um, It's never going to be the English. I know a lot, a lot of stupid Americans, and I, I feel like a lot of us agree on Donald Trump. I'm not going to make this too political, but he speaks English. Yeah, uh, debatable. <laughs> Sometimes I understand his English, but... 
Yeah. <laughs> but like if he if this guy who is just considered by a lot of especially in the United States just a total idiot, then of course these people who are trying their best they're going to learn. They're just going to change a little something in the routine. Yeah, precisely. Um yeah, Donald Trump knows the best words. I have all the best words. Bigly. <laughs> bigly. His <laughs> words are the bigliest. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I totally agree that when you really distill it down to its core, there's no valid excuse. Like, barring some like serious mental deficiency, there's yeah, no yeah. no reason that you cannot learn another language. Like you learn Portuguese. Mm-hmm. Most people in the world learn several languages. Everyone does it. It's not the school's fault. It's not like I don't have some special skill. You're not super talented with something. It's just right. you gotta you gotta do it. Um I think it might be a lot of cases less of a talent in learning languages and more of an ability to detach yourself from the language. Cause if you're a musical person for example, and you have this song in your head and you want to write it down, you can't just write down the word for it. You detach yourself from language and you're thinking in music. And that same thing kind of applies to English because I don't think water or I don't think agua and then I think water and then I imagine my idea of water. I think agua, (laughs) boom, picture. Like if you can just detach yourself from Portuguese, or whatever native language you speak, that makes it so much easier. Yeah, yeah, that's a an excellent point, and it's not a like a super easy thing to do. I always get that right. question, like, how do I stop thinking in Portuguese? But I totally hear you, like, with music. It's like when I'm listening, like, I started learning Portuguese through Brazilian music, and mm. it was just I was listening to it and listening to like old like. I don't know, like old like sailor songs and stuff like you know so that key and it's just like, okay, this has nothing to do with my like American brain or life and I'm just in this mm-hmm. different world. And then once you're in there, it's like pretty easy to like get deeper into the labyrinth, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's um it's amazing the how how different the world can be when you speak a different language and it's the same thing. It's you don't see two different worlds, but you, you can live two different worlds. Yeah, it's like two different, I was going to say like two different shades of color, but then for you, <laughs> that might be a totally different thing. So. No, I can, I can see that. It's like, um, I, don't, I don't even know a good metaphor for that. <laughs> so like it's different. I don't, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> cool. But I've, I've switched between English and Portuguese. Like, here at home, for example, Caillou speaks Portuguese to me. I respond to him in English. It's the easiest way for us to communicate because we both feel that we're being our most honest self. Yeah, I do the same sure. thing with my girlfriend. A lot of people here, they're like, whoa, that's weird. Like, do you not understand or does, does he not understand? But no, we do. It's just easier. Yeah, it's just like we're kind of being lazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's so weird that I can be speaking Portuguese in the United States and my mom will not understand it. I understand that she doesn't speak Portuguese, but at the same time, she doesn't understand what I'm saying. It's, it's someone who taught me my native language doesn't understand me. It's, that's the weirdest part of learning for me. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like a secret code, which is kind of yeah. awesome. I do love when I'm at my parents' house that I can talk to my students. And I'm like, <laughs> cara, cara. And then I'm like, glad my mom didn't hear that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, Cool, man. So I guess I'll just leave you with a couple of questions. If you could, um, I think we have very similar views on, on language and, you know, some of the best philosophies for teaching them. But I think we kind of have a contradiction that on one hand, I say like, oh, learning English is way easier than you think it is. But on the other hand, I'm like, hey, the reason I speak several languages and you're struggling with English is because I like worked really hard and I did these things and I really got into it. Um, so on one hand it's easier than you think, but on the other hand, it's still a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. Do you relate to that? Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. Um, 
it's not easy, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's easier than you think, but it's still hard. Right, right. I think people don't realize what kind of effort it's going to take. So they're thinking like, oh, I need, a, I need a push. But then it ends up that English needs you to pull. So it's sort of a weird part of your brain that you're exercising that can be really just strange to handle. And a lot of people ask me as well, they're like, what's the hardest language to learn? And I tell them the second one, there's no Chinese or, or Arabic. It's your second language. Cause you're learning not only a new language, you're learning how to separate your, your head. Yeah. So that's why it's so hard for so many people. Some of my students who have studied Spanish before, and then are learning English, they have an easier time because they know what it feels like to separate your thoughts. Yeah. So English is simpler. The hard work comes with organizing all this new information in your head. Cause you have like, imagine this printer just shooting out words every second. And then your brain is just like, okay, English, Portuguese, English, Portuguese. And then there's also, there's another Portuguese thing, English, wait, no. And then yeah, <laughs> it's precisely, crazy. it's like, you actually just need to buy a new printer <laughs> Yeah, or yeah. need to learn how to like make a 3d printer or something. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I totally understand that. It's very rare that I have a student that already speaks another second language that is really struggling with English. You know, maybe they need some like fine tuning or they want like just conversation practice. Mm -hmm. But my students that are just like, I don't get it. I don't know where to go. I'm not good, good at this. The English is their first second language. So I think it's more like mm -hmm. a psychological learning, like the meta skill of kind of learning how to learn new skills, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I have, I sort of get not angry, but it, it takes me off when students will tell me, oh, your Portuguese is so good. My English is bad. I'm like, wait a second. I can't say my Portuguese is bad, right? They're like, no. I'm like, okay, because that's because you're the native speaker and you can judge my Portuguese. They're like, yeah. I'm like, all right. So I'm the, I'm the teacher here and I'm telling you that <laughs> your English is great and I need you to stop thinking that you're right for this and just believe me that I'm understanding you because... <laughs> They think that they're they sound so awful and they're they're so busy looking at themselves that they're not listening to other people and realizing that they can understand. It's just because they're nervous. It's not like a so vain thing. It's it's normal that they get worried. Yeah. But I try and tell them like, if you're gonna judge me, let me let me tell you how good you're doing and believe it. Yeah. Yeah, man. Don't don't dish it out if you can't take it back, you know. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, I get that a lot. And originally I used to think like, oh, it's just because they don't have much interaction with with gringos that speak good Portuguese, which is true. Mm -hmm. But after teaching Brazilians for a lot of years, I don't have like the the idea of Brazilians that speak like really, really well is still like kind of a, a rarity in people that speak perfectly. So mm -hmm. when I say like like my Portuguese is so bad. Like every day I realize how bad it is, but I don't think most people realize how good their English is. You know, you can always realize yeah. there's room for improvement, but you need to accept the fact that like you're, you're communicating and that's the point. Exactly. I tell them oh, one of the worst things is the prepositions because I'll correct their sentence. That's my job. I got to correct you. And they'll say, I don't know. I live on New York. Oh, cool. It's in New York. What do you like about it? I, I throw the corrections in just like a little, little subtle thing. So we're not like, oh my God, your sentence was awful. No, I understood what you said. Is it correct? No, but you communicated. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, man. And even a lot of times they catch that and they're like, I made those purposes. So I said, now pause, now pause. And then I have to like <laughs> explain like in, on, at. And then they study that for like three weeks. And their yeah. English is the same to me. Exactly. You know? <laughs> I try and give, I try and tell people like, find what you're going to use most. I'm not going to stay in Oregon, for example. I'm going to probably use in Boston or in Sao Paulo most. So make that your base. If you can say in Sao Paulo, then you can say in Minas, then you can say in this. Exactly. Don't base it on a rule, based on an example. Yeah, precisely. Cool, cool. So I guess last question, would you... Um, 
If you could just give a little nugget worth of advice, what would it be for for Brazilians? Not like a, maybe a not like a specific thing, but kind of just how to get on the right track, how to overcome shame and not be nervous and not feel bad about yourself. <laughs> mm. End on a high note. Let's see. I'd say, especially for people living abroad, I don't know how to I don't know how to say it without sounding sort of high and mighty because I hate using the word native speaker because I feel like I'm sh- trying to show off, but really I'm, I'm not. Yeah, um, yeah. If you're abroad, you're surrounded by native speakers who, especially from the beginning, they understand more than you, which means that it's going to be easier for them to piece together the words you're saying, even if you're having trouble, you feel like you're having trouble communicating. Um, sort of in a way, don't think that the people understand as little as you do if you're in the beginning. They're going to be able to help you and sort of point you in the right direction. Because if you feel like you don't, you didn't make any sense, okay, maybe if you heard yourself say that, it would be hard to understand, but these people can really help you. Yeah. Don't be afraid to just vomit the words and just get your ideas out because with time you're going to have this idea that was originally a block of clay that eventually you can put into a sculpture exactly but just get the get the damn clay <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly man and i even suffer with that a little bit like learning portuguese it's hard to i mean you feel like an idiot at first and i'm like uh, tudo bem, vou para a praia hoje. Uh, <laughs> don, donde está? <laughs> like throw in oh, some yeah. Spanish or something. <laughs> that always happens. I and, don't know why. <laughs> and people are like, okay, this gringo is kind of weird, but I'm like, cara, um, para esta, para lá, vai para lá. And I'm just like, <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> that was successful. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then you start building off that, you start improving off that. People real. Uh, I like to show people, especially my intermediate students, who I, I get when they're just leaving beginner and they sort of their schedule changes, but they're already going into the advanced. Is that in the beginning, you have this one word that helps you understand the sentence. Name. Oh, what's your name? Okay, I got that. When you're going towards the advanced, you have the rest of the sentence that helps you understand this one word that you maybe wouldn't understand by itself. So you sort of flip the situation yeah. as you go. It's inverted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's fascinating. Very good point. Um, cool. Awesome. Anthony, I don't want to take too much of your time, but really appreciate you coming on the show, being the first guest. I think you'll be uh, a hard not. guest to, to follow up. That was <laughs> a good, uh, fascinating conversation. Well, thank you very much for having me. I uh, look forward to keeping up with the podcast and definitely going to give it a listen to and hope to hear a lot more coming from you. Cool, man. I appreciate it, Anthony. I will talk to you later, man. Ciao. All right.